All right, take your Bibles and turn to John chapter 5. We were going to take and go into the Sabbath, um, uh, chapter 5, verse 9. Verse 8, Jesus saith unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Before we get started here, let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, I pray that you'll take and uh, be with the Sunday school this morning. I pray that you'll give me wisdom as I teach. I pray that you'll give me the right words to say. I pray that we'll learn some things from your book. I pray that we'll have the desire to continue to study it, meditate on it, and to learn things from it. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So you have the healing of the man here, and it's on the Sabbath day. The Jews therefore, and he says unto him, here it says, and immediately the man was made whole. Uh, now Jesus said, verse 8, Jesus saith unto him, rise, take up thy bed, and walk. Now it isn't forbidden to walk on the Sabbath, but to take up your bed, that's work. That's a man working. And Jesus Christ, now you have to look, who told him to do this? Jesus Christ told him to do this. Rise, take up thy bed and walk. So Jesus Christ told him to do something that breaks the Sabbath. And you, you can't really get around that. Now uh, continue reading. And immediately the man was made old and took up his bed and walked on the same day was the Sabbath. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day. It is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. He answered them, He that made me whole, the same said unto me, Take up thy bed and walk. So he's like, Hey, the guy that healed me told me to do this. Okay? And he that was healed wist not who it was, for Jesus had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterwards, Jesus findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole, sin no more, lest the worst thing come unto thee. Now that's good advice for all. Uh, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen? Uh, sin no more, lest the worst thing should come upon me. And uh, oh, that we could actually take that advice, but uh, very seldom do we. The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole. So was that a sin? To tell? No. He didn't tell him not to tell who he was. Now some of the ones they healed, he did tell them, do not tell them who I am, they told anyway. And, uh, but he doesn't tell them not to tell here. Okay? The man departed and told the Jews that it was Jesus which had made him whole, and therefore did the Jews persecute Jesus and sought to slay him, because he had done these things on the Sabbath. But Jesus answered them, My Father worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making him equal with God. All right, so here's some things about the Sabbath that you want to keep in mind. All right, first of all, when Jesus Christ breaks the Sabbath, he says, I, my father works on the Sabbath, so I work because I do the work of my Father. And when the Jew says, okay, he's making himself equal with God, they were correct. Matter of fact, when it came to the Sabbath, God the Father put Jesus Christ above and made him Lord of the Sabbath. Now, ten, now here's the things you want to keep in mind. Write these things about the Sabbath. First of all, what is the Sabbath? Uh, the first time the word Sabbath appears in the Bible, as far as the word Sabbath, is Exodus 16.23. So take your Bible and turn to Exodus 
Exodus chapter 16, verse 23. And he saith unto him, This is that which the Lord hath said, Tomorrow is the rest of the holy Sabbath. Unto the Lord, Bake that which ye will bake today, and see that ye will settle, and that which remaineth overlay up for you to be kept until the morning. Alright, so he's given him instruction on how to deal with the manna. And he says, on the sixth day, gather twice as much, because on the seventh day, you're, you're not to do any work. So he gives them the law of the Sabbath, then he writes in the Ten Commandments to keep the Sabbath. Okay? Now, was it a commandment to keep the Sabbath until Exodus? Was it a commandment to keep the Sabbath until Exodus? Or did it show up in Exodus with the children of Israel? That's the question. Huh? It showed up. Was the principle there beforehand and the example given? Yes. The principle and example was given way back at creation. But it wasn't given as a command to keep it until the Ten Commandments, until Exodus here. This is the first time it shows up as a command that they have to keep. In other words, Abraham wasn't under the Sabbath. Isaac wasn't under the Sabbath. The Jews were not under the Sabbath when they were in Egypt. They're under the Sabbath as a covenant that's made with the children of Israel. Now let me show you this. Um, turn to Exodus chapter 20, verse 11. Now hopefully these verses in order will kind of show you the, where the Sabbath starts and where it comes. Alright, so here's the Ten Commandments that's being given to the children of Israel. Verse 11, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Okay, made it holy. He blessed it and made it holy. So the Lord gives them the example way back at creation. That this is, you're going to do as I did. And he did creation the way he did it for a reason. Because that seventh day was going to be important. But he doesn't put them under the law of it until Exodus here. This is when the command comes. Why is that? Well, because it has to do with a covenant with Israel. Turn to Exodus 31.16. Exodus 31.16. Alright, uh, let's, let's pick up verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep, for it is a sign. What is it? The Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. It is a sign, okay, between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. In other words, set you apart. That you know I'm the Lord. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, Therefore it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from what? Among his people. Among the children of Israel. And the children of Israel was the ones that was presenting the one true God to the world. They were a peculiar people that set apart. That, that's the reason in the Old Testament the one true God is referred to as the God of Israel. Now you understand it. Yes, sir. In the, in the Old Testament before, you know, which was around before this, there's reference to the angels as being the sons of God. Right. And I don't think the religious uh, groups would consider the angels equal to God. So weren't they incorrect in saying that by claiming to be because he makes himself uh, I'll give you that reference he makes him equal with God because he says more in Luke 
where he's Lord of the Sabbath. He has control over the Sabbath. That's where they get off. They make himself equal with God. Now, uh, because so when he says he's the Son of God, they know it's more than just an angel that he's the begotten Son of God. They understand what it means. Okay? And I think the passage in Luke, which is going to be the last passage I give you on this, is going to be the one that clarifies that. Where he makes himself, or the one in, there will be another one in John. But I think the Luke is the companion passage with this, where he gives a little bit more information, saying that the Lord gives him power over the Sabbath. And he's Lord of the Sabbath. And I think that's said in the same time here. But you have to get the other account in Luke to see all of what's said. You understand? So he's making himself equal with God, and that's what's so important about the Sabbath. Jesus could break the Sabbath because he's Lord of the Sabbath. He makes the rules about the Sabbath. So when he says, okay, the rule's not going to apply about the Sabbath anymore, then it doesn't apply to what he's doing. The sa- and what the Lord says... When the, in the Lord's teaching is the Sabbath does not apply to Jesus Christ. It's a sign for the Jews, a covenant that they're making with God. Well, Jesus Christ was God. That sign did not apply to Him. And that's what I'm going to uh, show you in the next few verses. Now on the Sabbath, on the Sabbath here, ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put cut off among his people. Uh, Exodus 31, 15. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest. Holy to the Lord, whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Now this is the rule that the Jews are going by in the time of Christ. This is why they want to put Jesus Christ to death, because he breaks the Sabbath. Okay, wherefore the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath through their generations for a perpetual what? Covenant. It's a covenant between the children of Israel. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Okay, and then he goes back to the six days of creation. But who is it a sign and a covenant for? The children of Israel. Now you understand that? It was made as a law and a commandment with the children of Israel when the children of Israel were brought forth out of Egypt and established as a nation. In other words, it was never a law before then. Just like circumcision never was. Circumcision was a covenant between Abraham. It had to do with the Abrahamic covenant. This has to do with the Mosaic covenant. It's the agreement that came in to make the children of Israel a peculiar people. And that's important to understand because you have to understand why you are not under the law of the Sabbath today. And you're not. None of us keep the Sabbath. Not one of us. Keep the Sabbath day. Say, well, I rest. Yeah, not like what they put. And the principle of the ideal of the Sabbath is still good today, but you're not under the law of the Sabbath. What's the principle of the ideal? That you need to rest on the seventh day. Six days you work, seventh day you rest. And there will be one day that you give to the Lord and one day you rest. And you need that. Now the Sabbath was made for man. Now look at, uh, now take your Bible and turn to Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And brother, on these next uh, two passages, I think it might answer your question on that. Okay? Mark chapter 2. One of these is the companion passage with what we're reading here. Mark chapter 2. And pick up verse 27. Mark chapter 2, verse 27. Let's go back up to um, verse 
23. And it came to pass that he went through the cornfields on the Sabbath day, and his disciples began as they went to pluck the ears of corn. So they didn't have nothing to eat. They hadn't prepared the day before. So they pick the corn, they shuck it, and they eat it. How many of you ever ate raw corn like that? You get that young sweet corn before it gets full. Even farmer's corn, when it's only about half developed, and you eat that thing raw, boy, that stuff's good stuff. I used to do that all the time in Tennessee. Now, this stuff they plant up here, I mean, that, that's that hard, grainy cattle corn, but you get that white, sweet stuff, oh, that's good. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, and the Pharisees said unto him, Behold, why do they on the Sabbath day and that which is not lawful? And he said unto them, Have ye never read what David did? When he had need and was unhungered, he and they that were with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar the high priest and did eat the showbread which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest and gave also to them which were with them. What's he saying? He's saying I'm an exception to the rule. That's what he's saying here. He gives an exception to the rule and he says he's in a... So he's saying he's an exception to the rule. He said unto them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. Okay? He's saying the Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Okay? In other words, it was made for your benefit. It was made for your benefit. And, uh, and then he makes himself Lord of the Sabbath. He said. You keep the Sabbath to serve me. I don't keep the Sabbath to serve you, is what he's saying there. Now, look at uh, Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. Luke chapter 6. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first, they went through the cornfields, and his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto him, Why do ye that which is not lawful, and do unto the Sabbath days? Sorry, brother, it's not a companion passage to that one. It's a companion passage to what I just read in Mark chapter 2. And Jesus answering them said, Have ye not read so much as this with David when he himself was in hunger? And they which were with him, how he went into the house of God, and did take and eat the showbread, gave also to them that were with him, which is not lawful to eat, but for the priest alone. And he said unto them that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And it came to pass... On another Sabbath, they entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day, that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up, stand forth in the midst. And he arose and stood forth. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing. Is it lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. And they were filled with madness and commanded one with another that they might do to Jesus. In other words, what he's saying is you're, you're missing the point of the Sabbath. The Sabbath is not there for you to not do what's right. In other words, uh, you, I guarantee you they probably fought on the Sabbath day when a battle was there. They wouldn't have had any choice. You think they're not going to... F- oh, well, Philistines, you know, it's our Sabbath day. It's our holy day. Don't attack. We'll take, and, uh, take a break. Ah, that's not happening. Or, uh, on our time, he challenges, if your animal falls in a pit and it's an immediate thing, do you not pull it out on the Sabbath day? Sure they do. Sure they do. If a guy has his leg amputated or cut off, a bad accident happened on the Sabbath day, what are they going to tell the doctor? Well, you can't help him until the next day. No. There's a practical sense that applied there. 
Okay? Jesus said, Is it not lawful for me to do good on the Sabbath day? To do a righteous act on the Sabbath day? And uh, they had made the Sabbath day the pinnacle of their worship instead of the Lord of the Sabbath. It's just like making the creature, worshiping and serving the creature more than the Creator. Oh, the Creator made the creature, but we're going to worship the creature. The Lord made the Sabbath, but we're going to worship the Sabbath day. They made it an object of worship instead of an object of service for God. You, you see what I'm saying? And when He says, I'm Lord of the Sabbath, He says, I, make, I have control of the Sabbath. You're ser- doing the Sabbath to serve me. I'm not watching the Sabbath to serve you. And that's what he means when he says, I met the Lord of the Sabbath. Well, for him to make himself Lord of the Sabbath, what does he have to do? He has to make himself equal with the one that made the Sabbath, right? He's got to make himself equal with God. And that's why they're recognizing somehow they're putting together that because he's saying that he's in control of the Sabbath and the Sabbath doesn't apply to him, that he's equal with God. Uh, At least that's the way I understand it, brother. That's the way I understand it. Now, uh, let's go back to uh, John chapter chapter 5. He says, Jesus saith unto my father, worketh hitherto, and I work. Therefore the Jews sought the more to kill him, because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then answered Jesus and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the Father do... For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. For the Father loveth the Son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. For as the Father raiseth up the dead, and quickeneth them, even so the, the Son quickeneth whom he will. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. In other words, he's showing the authority that the Father has given him. Explaining not only the Sabbath, but the authority that he has in all things. Okay? Then all men should honor who? The Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father which have sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my words and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. For as the Father hath life in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. And hath, now verse 27 is the key verse. And have given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the Son of Man. All right, now all of that goes with the explanation of 17 and 18, making himself equal with God. Because it's continuing the thought in 19, then answered Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you. So they understand he's making himself equal with God here. They know that. And uh, the accusations that they're... The Pharisees' reasoning of thought about the law is not wrong. Their acceptance of Jesus Christ is what's wrong. Their refusal to believe who he is and who he claims to be is what's wrong because they know who he claims to be. That's what's wrong. And they refuse to accept that. They refuse to accept his authority. And he has the authority to say, you know what, the Sabbath does not apply to me. It does not apply. I'm Lord of the Sabbath. That thing doesn't apply. And he has that authority. 
Now, let me ask you something. Does the Sabbath apply to you? Does the Sabbath apply to you today? Are you in a covenant with the Lord as a sign to be a peculiar people where you have to keep the Sabbath? That covenant was part of the law. No, you're not. And when somebody tries to put you under the Sabbath, do you know what verse that you want to use? Take your Bible and turn to Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2, and pick up verse 14. Colossians 2, 14. Blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was, what, against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to, uh, nailing it to his cross, and having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or drink. The Jews were under certain laws about meat and drink to make them a peculiar people. Amen? Or in respect of an what? Holy day. Or of the new moon. Or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come but the body is of Christ so when that cross happens after the cross you know what all those laws that made the Israel a peculiar people as far as a covenant to make the children of Israel a peculiar people as covenants of the children of Israel with them were done away with when the law was done away and that temple was rent in twain. Those were done away with. The church begins at the cross. And those covenant ceremonial laws are done away with also. Now it's not fully revealed till Paul, but Jesus Christ is showing that they do not apply to Him. And then He takes them away. Okay? And that's why we can enjoy bacon today. Thank God. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, that's... A... <laughs> I mean, because if you were under that law, I mean, there's more than... To make the children of Israel peculiar people, you, that's why you have the argument about circumcision with the Jews and the Gentiles. Because they were supposed to be circumcised to enter into the Abrahamic covenant. To enter into the Mosaic covenant, they're supposed to keep the Sabbath. And they're supposed to not eat certain things and not drink certain things. To be a peculiar people. They're supposed to wear their hair a certain way. Wear their... And, you, and you know what you have today? You have a whole bunch of these uh, independent Baptists still trying to put you under these covenants to make you a peculiar people. Now, everything's written for our learning, amen? Now this is where you have to stay balanced. So what's written for our learning? God worked six days and He will rest it on the seventh. you got to take a day of rest and a day that you give to the Lord. And that is a good principle to live by. You can't work seven days a week, 365 days a year. If you don't rest, you're going to wear yourself out. You know, if you don't take a day and give it to the Lord, a day to worship the Lord, you're going to wear yourself out. You know why we re meet on Sunday? Oh, to keep that Sabbath law. Does God rest? Well, Sunday's the first day of the week, not the seventh. On that one, the seventh day Adventist has it right. It's Saturday. It's not Sunday. Well, a lot of times we see the, the disciples meet on the first day of the week in the book of Acts. Well, you know what you also see on the book of Acts? When Paul's trying to reach the Jews, he goes in on the Sabbath day and sits in the synagogue. So what are they doing on the Sabbath day? They're all going to the synagogue. The Jews went to the synagogue. That's the day they worshiped the Lord. It was on the Sabbath day. And that's when they were taught the Bible. It was on the Sabbath day. So they took that time, that Sabbath day was the time to learn the Bible and sit under the teaching of the Bible. And that principle was given. 
Okay? So you take that day. Now, as a Christian, you know what? Your bar's actually raised higher. They were told to give one day to the Lord. You know what you should do? You should give every day to the Lord. Now, that doesn't mean you have to rest every day, but you should give every day to the Lord. I'll set that bar higher, okay? Every day is a day as unto the Lord and not unto men, right? So uh, you give that day to the Lord. So don't get too unbalanced where you sit there and say, you know, you could take this the wrong way and say, you know what, I can do whatever I want seven days a week. You know what you're doing then? You're taking the law of liberty and you're abusing it. Um, you know, Simona was telling me that it, we were seeing the uh, farmer was working on Sunday out there in the fields back behind the house. She goes, oh, he could never get away with that in Romania. Why? Because there's a strong orthodox there. And they value that day like a day of the Sabbath. Well, for one, they got the wrong day. <laughs> they think it's Sunday. But they value it like the Sabbath. Well, if you're trying to reach people, what do you do? You make yourself like them. So if the people are... Now around here, you don't have that problem anymore. People could care less about Sunday. They'll play ball games. They'll work. They don't care. It means nothing to the people around here. You go down south, it's still... Or it used to down south. Now you know what? Today it probably doesn't. But it used to mean something down south. You go back into the Bible Belt, Sunday used to mean something. You didn't work on Sunday. All the shops were closed down on Sunday. Everything was closed on Sunday. It's gotten where nobody recognizes it in the U.S. anymore. Nobody takes one day aside for the Lord. No days recognized as a day for the Lord. But, but that little ideal, there's nothing wrong with that ideal. And there's nothing wrong with conducting yourself in such a way where you're not a bad example to those who you're trying to reach. But when it comes to actual biblical doctrine, the Sabbath day was done away with at the cross. When Israel was set aside, and that thing will not come back into place until the tribulation. Why does it come back in the tribulation? Because God starts dealing with the Jew again. The Jew's been set aside. But when God starts dealing with that Jew again, these laws that the Jews applied to make themselves a peculiar people will come back in. So what, so what does the Lord say? Pray that your flight is not on the Sabbath. That's why He says that. Because they're back under that law again. All right. Uh, now, brother, I don't know if that answered your question. Does it answer your question somewhat? <laughs> I mean, as far as I can see it with the whole thing, they understand somehow that what he's referring to is that he is equal with God. And uh, it, it may be they're putting things together that was said before on this place, on this one. But uh, he, he's directly breaking the Sabbath here. Uh, and one of the things you have to look at, keep in mind when you read these, these Jews had an argument that Jesus Christ was breaking the Sabbath according to the way it's written. But the reason he could break the Sabbath was he was Lord of the Sabbath. Meaning, he was the God that made the Sabbath. And the Sabbath was made for them. It wasn't made for him. It was made for them. As a covenant for them between him and them. So that was something they were supposed to keep, not him. That's what he's saying when he takes that authority, says, I'm the Lord of the Sabbath. He's saying, hey, I get to make the rules about the Sabbath. That thing was made for you. Okay? And... Uh, that unless you look at Jesus Christ as God in the flesh, you'd have, as a Jew, you'd have to stone him. You'd have to stone him. Because if he was just a man, he was breaking the Sabbath. He was breaking the Sabbath. He didn't have that authority if he was just a man. 
Let's go back to uh, John chapter 5. Now, uh, for as the Father raiseth up the dead and quickeneth them, in other words, make them alive, so the Son quickeneth whom He will. Uh, this is John chapter 5, verse 21. Okay? For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto what? The Son. So who's going to be doing the great white throne judgment? It's going to be Jesus Christ. When they stand before God, it's Jesus Christ they're standing before. He will be their judge. The Lord gives them all judgment unto the Son. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father that hath sent him. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and that shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Now that's going to be eternal condemnation there. Condemnation can be used in more than one way. Um, when we die, that's condemnation. And uh, sometimes the word is used to talk about our flesh. Sometimes it's used to talk about the soul. When it's talking about everlasting life, it's talking about the soul here. Uh, so it doesn't mean that somebody, the flesh won't die. It means the soul won't die. Everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. Now, uh, we're going to go into the seven resurrections here. And uh, because I'm going to teach on the resurrection but from here um, down through 29. And I want to go through the seven resurrections. And there's seven of them. And... Uh, and you want to get those downs. I teach, I, I had somebody bring up a question about the rapture, pre-trip rapture. I teach the resurrections and the raptures different. There's seven resurrections and there's seven raptures. Now a couple of the resurrections and the raptures kind of go hand in hand with each other. So that's why a lot of times people teach them together. Now I want to give you the seven resurrections next week. If you can get here, um, I'll list them for you. There's the resurrection of Christ. That's the first one. And then you have the resurrection of the Old Testament saints, which is the first fruits. And then you have the spiritual resurrection of the believer. Okay, That's a, the resurrection of when you get saved, your soul resurrects and becomes alive again. And it's set together in heavenly places. And that happens as soon as you get saved. Then you have the physical resurrection of the believer. That's when the dead in Christ shall rise. Now that will happen at the rapture, same time as the rapture, right before the rapture. Then you have the resurrection of Israel as a nation. Okay, the resurrection of Israel. That's when all Old Testament Israel will resurrect again to go into the millennial reign. Because in the millennial reign, you have Phinehas the high priest and you have David going in. They go into that millennial reign. They are resurrected at the end of the tribulation. Physically resurrected. That's Ezekiel 37. Then you have the tribulation saints resurrection. And then you also have the resurrection of the dead at the last day to be judged. And that's the great white throne judgment. So those are seven resurre resurrections. And we will take and uh, go through those. Many people can't even see one resurrection, much less seven of them. And those are at least seven. And I also teach that there's seven raptures. And... Uh, and the seven raptures are a little bit different. I teach those a little bit differently. So uh, we'll take and go over them next week. Let's take a break there.